Do you know how many signatures uh, people need to get on the ballot if you're an independent or a third-party guy? And uh, how many signatures you need to get in Illinois? Well, please inform us. Absolutely. Yeah, we'd like well, to know. Well, if you're a candidate for Congress in Illinois and you're uh, a Democrat or a Republican, you need somewhere between uh, 400 and 600. If you're an independent or a third party, you need somewhere between 8,000 and 11,000 valid signatures. So for uh, 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 for uh, to make sure you get the ballot, you need like 15 to 20,000 signatures. Except in the fifth district where I ran, because uh, the Green Party is an established party, so I needed 12 signatures. Wow, I almost uh, spit my drink out there, Rob. That's unbelievable. I can't believe that is true. Um, it, right. It's one well, half one percent of uh, of the number of uh, 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 votes uh, that the uh, uh, gubernatorial candidate for our party got in the last election. I think it was like twenty four hundred. And since uh, we're an established party in the fifth district, because we got more than five percent of the vote uh, in two thousand fourteen for the fifth. Uh, Congress, so the Green Party candidate for Congress in the 5th District got more than 5% of the vote. This time we need one half of 1% of what the governor candidate got, which was 2,400. Multiply that by half of 1%, you get 12. Well, that sounds worse than gerrymandering districts or something like that. How long have you been in District Number 5, Rob? Uh, I have uh, lived and worked in the area all of my life, all 63 years of my life. Uh, due to gerrymandering, extreme gerrymandering in Illinois, my home was, uh, since I've run for public office before, the uh, uh, chairman of the Illinois Democratic Party who wrote the uh, 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 legislative maps, uh, he ran a little narrow strip a mile wide and 10 miles long uh, from another faraway district and then made a right turn, a 90 degree turn to the right and, and the, another strip about a mile wide and four miles long to grab my house and put it in a faraway district where nobody knows me and I don't know anybody. The U.S. Constitution protects congressional candidates from that type of a scam, that type of gerrymandering scam by saying that uh, uh, candidates for Congress must be a resident of the state in which they're running, but you don't have to be a resident of the district uh, to protect us against this kind of gerrymandering. So I'm very, very relevant to the 5th District, even though my house is slightly outside of the 5th District due to gerrymandering. Yeah, that's true. And uh, now, may I ask you, um, and I don't have this particular question, but I'm sure a lot of people would want to know, why are did you decide to run as a Green Party candidate instead of, you know, the Republican or Democrats? I'm a retired radio talk show host. Ten years ago, I had the Green Party candidate for governor and lieutenant governor uh, as a guest on my morning drive radio talk show. And I realized after uh, uh, listening to them that I was in the wrong party when I was in the Democratic Party. What I really should do is become part of the Green Party. So I've been with the Green Party for 10 years. I was the chairman of the Cook County Green Party. Chicago is the biggest city in Cook County. Uh, and uh, so I've been with the Green Party for 10 years. That's why I'm with the Green Party. Uh, the Green Party is uh, uh, environmentally sensitive. Uh, we don't take corporate contributions. So our constituency is the voters, not the corporations who donate the uh, thousands and hundreds of thousands of dollars to buy your uh, influence, uh, to buy influence with the congressman. Now, Rob, I have about ten questions here, or ten issues, and just like to hear your thoughts on each one here, if that's all right. All right, so we'll start with accountability and transparency. What thoughts come to your mind when you hear accountability, transparency? There should be maximum accountability and maximum transparency. I could elaborate, but I think that makes the point real clear. All right, great. And the next one is the justice system. Our court system is a house of fraud. The facts, the law, and the Constitution don't make one iota of difference in court. What matters is, are you friends with the judge? Is your attorney, that's even more important, is your attorney uh, friends with the judge, or is the opponent's attorney friends with the judge? 
what is the political persuasion of the judge, uh, because the judge is there, the judge isn't there to dispense justice, the judge is there to advance his personal political agenda. So, uh, and, and it's demonstrated by what happened to Merrick uh, uh, Garland, uh, uh, Barack's uh, uh, latest Supreme Court nomination, uh, Merrick, who uh, grew up uh, uh, literally down the block, maybe a couple miles away. Uh, but so I'm, I'm from the same culture as Merrick and from the same general community as, as he is. Uh, he's probably the, the most highly qualified nominee for the Supreme Court of all time. He can't even get a hearing because uh, uh, the uh, uh, Republican Party has made it clear that their, not only their top priority, their only priority when it comes to who should be a judge is politics. So since politics is the only priority, uh, the, the Supreme Court and the lower federal courts and the state courts, too, for that matter, they have zero credibility. Nobody should take seriously anything that our courts say and do. It's all based on politics and who and uh, whether uh, your attorney or the opposing attorney is friends with the judge. All right. And uh, now the next topic we'd like to hear some of your thoughts on is small and mid-sized businesses. I own a small business. I have an airplane construction business. I build kit airplanes. I have a builder's assist center for builders of kit airplanes. Uh, so uh, uh, these are two-seat airplanes that fly all over the country. They're, they're not like little model airplanes. These are real airplanes that people fly in, uh, airplanes like the one that I fly in all over the country. Uh, I help people build airplanes, and so I'm a great advocate of small business and also medium-sized businesses. Uh, large businesses are good, too, but uh, you know that's why I'm opposed to socialism. With, with socialism, it, uh, well, well let, me, let me go back one step. With capitalism, uh, getting it right is what matters. With socialism... It's whether you try, and if you try, you get paid. If you fail, you get paid. So there's no incentive to making sure that you get it right. Uh, with capitalism, you get paid for results. With socialism, you get paid. So I'm yeah. for capital, I'm for small business and uh, medium business, as well as large business. So it sounds like you probably would have been against the bailouts in 2008, right? Um, and so um, now next topic is uh, military spending and uh, foreign policy. I'm glad you asked me about military spending because I have long felt that uh, it's okay for our armed forces to intervene in behalf of other countries but the other countries ought to be paying the cost. The other countries ought to be paying the salaries of our soldiers and paying the operating expenses for our participation and intervention in behalf of their country instead of our taxpayers in this country getting stuck with the bill for subsidizing the uh, 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 military uh, support uh, uh, for other countries. All right. And, um, yeah, like in uh, Germany and South Korea and lots of other places, Saudi Arabia. Um, so what about free and yeah. fair trade? I don't know what the question is. I didn't hear you. Yeah, what are your thoughts on um, free and fair trade with other countries? Here's what I think we ought to do. I think we ought to, and, and this is relevant to, you, to your question. What we need to do in this country is eliminate the income tax system and replace it with a consumption tax because that way we would eliminate the tax on labor and uh, uh, instead of uh, uh, products coming in from other countries where they have uh, a lower tax rate so the cost of production is lower, we need to lower the cost of production here at home by eliminating the, uh, uh, the labor tax, the income tax, and that would uh, similarly, by putting consumption tax, that would place a higher tax on imports. So we could do a lot for uh, the you know, balance of trade deficit. Uh, we could do a lot for exports in the country, and we could do a lot to uh, minimize imports. Not that imports is a bad thing, 
but to, to make it more of a level playing field if we were to eliminate the income tax, which only affects products produced in this country, and instead use a consumption tax so no matter where the products are produced, they're taxed the same. All right. All right. Great. And uh, how about just in general, civil liberties, civil rights? I'm the most prominent atheist in the history of Illinois. I have uh, the, the slogan for Rob Sherman advocacy is fighting injustice, one victory at a time. I have won more state church separation battles in this country than the, uh, just about anybody else in the history of America, maybe more than anybody else in the history of America, because we've had a lot of state church separation violations in Illinois that I have successfully challenged. But I've also been involved in challenging uh, other injustices. Uh, Ten years ago, when I ran for state representative in Illinois, uh, I had a, uh, uh, a proposal for a uh, uh, a family, it's a, uh, a defensive family uh, amendment or a defensive family law. You, you've heard of the uh, Defensive Marriage Act, uh, where uh, from from eight years ago, where uh, uh, it was uh, the right wing, uh, the the, the uh, radical, uh, the, the crazy right wingers uh, wanted to define marriage as uh, 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 but only between a man and a woman. I was proposing a Defensive Family Act, which says that any unmarried adult can marry any other willing, unmarried, and unrelated adult because that's your family. So I have been a long proponent, and and now uh, thanks to both uh, Illinois state law and the Supreme Court from uh, from about a year ago, uh, uh, any that's basically the national policy now. My proposal from 10 years ago is national policy. Uh, I've also uh, fought injustice uh, in regards to uh, uh, black people and other minorities, but what I, and women too. But what I found is that most minority groups, uh, women, blacks, gay people, they want their own people fighting their battle. They don't want uh, Rob Sherman doing it. So I support, but I am a strong supporter and advocate uh, and activist for social justice and civil rights. All right, sorry. Let me just ask one more question on, on that um, in a different angle here. What about um, privacy versus security, that debate? Privacy comes first. All right. And um, now, I, I don't want the government spying on me or spying on other people uh, by claiming, oh, we're doing it for security because th- that opens the door for the government to claim that any spying that it does on its political opponents Oh, we're doing it for security reasons. Yeah, right. So we we need to get rid of that scam by you know, politicians to spy on their opponents uh, by claiming we're doing it for security. And now, how about a pitch to the Democrats and the Republicans and the Independents that you're running to represent, sir? So what is my pitch to Democrats and Republicans for why they should vote for me. I was yeah. asked that. You'll love this answer. I was asked that uh, last week on Friday, uh, which would be uh, September 9th, uh, in case uh, this is playing uh, you know, at, at some point in the future. I went to the interview by the Chicago Sun-Times, which, as uh, many of you know, is the second largest newspaper in Illinois. They asked me during my candidate endorsement interview, why should people vote? for Rob Sherman of the Green Party, and I said for the same reason that the people, you know, it's the same question as why should people read the Chicago Sun-Times when they could be reading a Chicago Tribune or getting their news from CNN. What you want is the best source. So I, you know, while I'm sitting in the Sun-Times newsroom, I suggest they're the best newspaper. That's why people should read paper. But similarly, vote for me because I'm the best candidate. Vote for me. You know, take a look at RobSherman.com. Take a look at my agenda. If you support my agenda, you should vote for me. And maybe I'll win, but even if I don't, by receiving a lot of votes, I can then go to whoever it is that does win and say, hey, I received a lot of votes because of my agenda. I'd like to go over my agenda with you 
to see which, if any, of these agenda items you might find has merit, and you can carry the ball on the, uh, the cafeteria menu uh, thing, you know, pick and choose uh, items off of my agenda that you can uh, support and uh, advocate for, even if you don't uh, support all of my agenda items. 